All right, so this is a little bit of review and practice over finding domain and range from a graph. I know this is probably one of the most difficult things that we talked about in this last unit, so hopefully um, this will help you out a little bit. So remember that the big thing here is that the domain is all of the x values. Okay, so our domain is all possible x's. Sorry, I don't have my stylus. I'm writing with my finger, so this is going to be a little bit messy. And then the range is the same thing, but it's all possible y values. Now, on most of these graphs where it gives you a line or a curve or something that's continued like this and connected, you're going to have to give this as as an interval from this number to this number or whatever. I think that the easiest way to do this is to take your pencil or take a highlighter or something like that and literally highlight the section of the x-axis that shows you where you can find points or the section of the y-axis that shows you where you can find points. So let's go through a couple of examples of what I mean by that. Domain. Let's look at x's. So if I am standing at the origin, okay, we want to say if I'm standing here, if I look to the left, how far am I going to be able to find this graph? Well, I can go from 0 all the way out to 3. This graph here, I have all this graph, but once I get past 3, there's nothing out here. So that's what we're talking about when we mean where can we see it, all right? Um, so I can go clear out to 3. If I'm going the opposite direction, similarly, I can get out to negative 3. Every single one of those points, okay, if I were to look up anywhere along this section, I'm going to find points that I can make on my graph, okay? And that's the whole point of domain and range, but we're just looking at the x's for right now. So that highlighted section is where I can find my graph. Now, we have to use compound inequalities to represent this. For the domain, this is going to be negative 3 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to positive 3. You have to write this as a compound inequality. What this says is that x is between negative 3 and positive 3, and we're including negative 3 and positive 3. Okay, I don't want to see this written out as two separate inequalities. It needs to be written as a compound inequality like this. Okay, you always put the smallest number first and the biggest number last. We practiced this a lot in the last unit, but we're still having a really hard time with this. Okay, this is saying if we read, just so you have a little better understanding of this, if we just read this part, this says negative 3 is less than x. That's saying the numbers on that side are going to be smaller than whatever x is. Or if I read it from right to left instead of from left to right, that says x is greater than negative 3. So those are the ones that are bigger. If I read this direction, it says that x is less than negative 3. So that's all the points coming this way. The other one is all the points coming this way, and that's why we get this whole section of our number line here. Okay, I'm going to erase some of this off of my graph so we can now look at the range. Okay, the range is going to be very much the same way, but instead of looking on the x-axis with the range, we're going to be looking on the y-axis. So if I look here, I'm not going to have anything below zero because I have these points here where it stops. So if I go across to where that touches, these are my two starting and stopping points. So what that means is that on the y-axis, I can get values between here and here. This is kind of like a sideways number line, so you have to read it a little bit differently. This point here is 0. I can go from 0 to 2. So my range would be 0 
is smaller than the x's, but x has to be smaller than 2. Anytime it's between, you're going to have that x in between two things. Anytime it's arranged, that's how you need to write it, okay? Instead of writing out the words, x is between, ooh, and I'm sorry, this should be a y. Do you know why it should be a y instead of an x? Because range is talking about our y values, okay? So anytime we're trying to say we want numbers between this and this, that's how we write this in math, so you need to make sure you're watching for that. Okay, let's just go quickly through a couple more examples here. Let's look first at the domain, okay? Look at where my farthest points are on the x. My farthest x point is here, and my farthest x point the other direction is here. That shows me that I have anything from this value to this value on my x-axis. So we're going to look at that number line. Okay, um, sorry, I'm having an issue here with my, here we go. So from that number line, my domain is between what two numbers? Negative 2 and positive 1. So that means my x is going to go between those two values. Always smallest to biggest. The smallest number goes first, the biggest number goes last. Okay, now we can do the same thing with our range. So I look at my y values. Here's my highest point on the y. Here's my lowest point on the y. And if I highlight the part of the axis then that I'm talking about, I'm talking about all of these points in between. So again, we have a range. Think of this as a sideways number line. Okay, it's no different than the x if you tilt your head our range, we see that our smallest value is negative 3, and our biggest value is positive 3. So that would be our domain and range. We're talking about the number lines. The y-axis is a number line just the same as the x-axis is. You're just writing up and down, kind of more like a thermometer, than we are measuring side to side like you would maybe with a ruler on the x-axis. Let's look at another. Here's one where we introduce the arrows, and so this does a little bit different. What is important to notice about this is these arrows, what do they tell us? They tell us that our graph is going to keep going on forever, even though we can't see the rest of it. So here's where we have to kind of do that. Let's stand at the origin. If I'm standing here, okay, we're doing domain right now, so we're looking on the x-axis. If I look to the right, where is that graph ever going to stop? Well, here's the thing. These arrows mean that it keeps going. So, and it's going at a little bit of an angle, so it's still moving this way. And it's going to keep doing that forever. So can I draw a stopping point or a starting point on my graph going to the right? No. Then we can look the same way to the left. Can I find a starting or stopping point if I look to the left? No, I can't because, again, these arrows are going on forever. That's where we get something a little bit different for our domain. In this case, our domain, do you remember what we call it? We're going to say all real numbers. Because if there is no starting or stopping point, that means I can get anything. So if we were highlighting the axis where I get points, I would keep highlighting and I would never stop and I would keep going on forever this way. Same thing if I went to the left. I'd start highlighting, but since I'd never find a stopping point, I'd keep going on forever. Okay, let's look now at the range. Okay, I'm standing at the origin. I look up. These are going to keep going up forever, so I'm always going to be able to find a graph if I go up. But if I get here and I start to look down, okay, I have graph here, I have graph here, I have graph here, but then I get to this point right here, 
there is going to be no more graph as I keep going down. So there's going to be nothing below that. So that means I can get anything going to the top but not anything going down. My starting point here then would be this, and this is at negative 3. And since the numbers are getting bigger as I follow up the number line, the way that we would write the range would be to say that y, because this is the range this time, is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, it's all real numbers for the domain because we can go to the right or the left forever. But the range, even though we can go up forever, that's why we used a greater than, is because we can keep going up and up and up, but I have a starting point, and so that's why we did not get all real numbers for the range. Let's skip this one. Here's one last example, okay, and then you're done. This one, very similar. Let's look at the x's. I have a very clear starting point at my x here. I have a very clear ending point at my x here. So here's my starting value and my ending value. What's really different about this one is this open circle right here. What does that tell you about that point? It means it's not included. So when I put my domain, okay, if we're looking at the axis, in between that negative 5 and that positive 4, I can cover all of that. So I know that I'm going to have my x between the two inequalities because I have a starting and a stopping point. The example we looked at with the, the parabola, that only had a stopping point. That's why we didn't put it between two symbols. But this one, it's between. And my lowest point is negative 5. My highest point is positive 4. But here's what we have to look for. We have to check our inequalities now. Okay? Should I put a line underneath them or not? On the first one, I have an open circle. So I'm going to leave that one. But on the other one, we have a closed circle, so that's why that one is equal to, just like we do on any other number line. Okay, now let's look at the y values. We have uh, here is my highest y value. Here is my highest or my lowest y value. So if we look at the part of the axis then that we're talking about, we're going from here to here. That's the section of the number line that our graph is covering. So for this one, our range, and again, we have that open circle we have to be careful of. Lowest number is negative 2. Highest number is positive 3, and we're talking about a y. The negative 2 is where the open circle is, so this one's just less than. The other one has a closed circle, so it's greater than, okay? Just several examples so you can look at. I'm also going to post, um, you have the Khan Academy problems to practice with. So keep this stuff in mind as we get ready for our quiz tomorrow. I'll see you guys then.